library and upload it to iCloud, which could take weeks, we'll scan and match each song against the 20 million songs already in iCloud. And the few that we don't find, we'll upload. This means your iTunes music library is now in iCloud, and we can do some really great things. Let's say you've got an iPad here and there's no music on it. I go in and I turn on iTunes Match, and now I can see my whole iTunes music library, every single song. And I can stream any song by just tapping on it. But it's even better than that. I see all of my playlists. I can edit a playlist or create a new playlist, and those are automatically updated across all my devices. So iTunes Match, it scans and matches your library against our 20 million songs. We'll upload what we don't find. We'll stream any song, album, or playlist. We'll cache the songs you listen to most right on your device. And for match songs, we'll upgrade them to our iTunes pristine quality. And you get all of this for just $24.99 a year. And that's iTunes Match. So iCloud, it's an amazing and comprehensive set of cloud services, including contacts, calendars, mail, cloud, backup, iTunes in the cloud, photo stream, documents in the cloud, apps, books, find my iPhone and find my friends, and that's iCloud. iCloud will ship on October 12th, the same day as iOS 5 iTunes Match ships at the end of the month in the U.S., and we're working very hard to add additional countries before the end of the year. Now, we've created a short video that shows how iCloud makes your life easier every day, and I'd like to show it to you now. With iCloud, when you buy a song on one device, it instantly downloads to all your others. Take a picture here, and it shows up there. Start a project in one place, and pick up right where you left off in another. Capture the moment here, And it's waiting for you there. Make a change on this, and it updates on that. And with iCloud, it all works automatically and wirelessly. So you always have the things you want exactly where you want them. So that's iCloud, and I'd like to ask Phil Schiller to please uh, join us here. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm really pleased to talk to you about the iPod. You know, we started the iPod simply because we love music, and that hasn't stopped. We still love music, and we're still making great iPods. In fact, it's the best lineup we've ever made, the Shuffle, the Nano, the iPod Touch. So I'd like to give you updates to two of those lines today. First, iPod Nano. Just last year, we introduced an all new iPod Nano, and it's a really fun way to enjoy your music wherever you are. And customers love it for its compact design, its multi-touch display. It's built in volume buttons and a clip so you can wear it wherever you go. It has a pedometer and even a built-in FM radio. So we've added some updates this year. First, with this multi-touch display, we decided to make it even easier to navigate. And so now you can display big, beautiful icons for all of the features on it and just swipe between them with your finger to switch between the radio, the clock, the fitness application. It's really simple. And fitness, of course, is one of the most popular uses for the Nano. You can use it when you go to the gym, when you go on one of those walks. 
A lot of people like to run with their iPod Nano. So we've improved the fitness experience as well. Now, right out of the box with the iPod Nano, you can go on not only a walk, but a run as well, without adding any extra sensors or devices, right out of the box. You go for your run, you come back, you plug your Nano into your Mac or PC, and you can upload all the data about your run right up onto Nike Plus's website and track all of your runs over time, look for achievements, compete with friends. It's a really great way to get fit. So that's one of the really great uses of an iPod Nano. There's a really cool use that some people have created all on their own. <laughs> without, without us doing this, they created a market of accessories like watch bands to make this watch you can wear that's an iPod Nano. It has all your music in it and, of course, tells time. And we thought that was really fun. We see this around the world. So with the updated Nano, we've added in the software some new clock faces to make it fun for people who like to wear it as a watch. Why not, right? So here's one. This is a classic, great, beautiful watch with Roman numerals. Or maybe you want a retro LED-style watch on your wrist. A watch with some really cool complications. Or a watch that's color coordinated with the color Nano you picked. And then this is really fun. We've worked with good partners at Disney on some characters you can have on your watch. So if you want a Mickey Mouse watch, <laughs> you can now get one. Yeah. Yes, the arms move to keep track with time, or you can get Minnie Mouse as well. So it's really cool. There's the iPod Nano comes in seven gorgeous colors. It's been priced for eight gigabytes at 149 and 16 gigabytes at 179. Well, now the iPod Nano just 149 for 16 gigs and 129 for 8 gigs, making it the most affordable Nano we've ever had. So that Nano is available today. Next, iPod Touch. As you heard earlier, the iPod Touch is now our most popular iPod. And it's no surprise that it's so incredible. It's amazingly thin. It's got that beautiful retina display. Does FaceTime video calling. You can do HD video with the built-in camera. It has a gyro, so all those great apps and games you download have amazing gameplay. In fact, not only is it the most popular music player in the world, we're just so proud that it's now become the most popular portable game player as well. So it is a great device. And of course, it's going to now run iOS 5. And all those great things that Scott talked to you about, the iPod, the iPod Touch does those as well. But some of them make amazing sense on an iPod Touch. So if you think about it, for example, iMessage. An iPod Touch isn't a phone. It doesn't have text messaging. But now with iMessage, you can communicate with your friends and family who are also using iMessage. You can text. You can send photos. You can take videos and send them along. You can send your location. And parents like it because on Wi-Fi, it's free and unlimited. So it's really neat. And we said it's the most popular portable gaming device. So of course, the things Scott talked to you about, about Game Center, make perfect sense. Now you can discover new friends. You can find new games to play and download them and challenge each other. It is perfect for this great mobile gaming device. So iOS 5 is a tremendous upgrade for the iPod Touch. And so is iCloud. Think of all those things Scott, that, that Eddie talked to you about, iCloud. They're even more powerful when you think about it on an iPod Touch. So now wherever you are, this amazingly thin iPod can have access to all of your music, all of your books, all of your documents, all the TV shows you want to watch. And you can get access to all of them right from your iPod Touch. So the iPod Touch now comes with iOS 5 and iCloud, huge things in their own right. In addition, it comes in both black and now white as well, a brand new white version. And it's gorgeous. The iPod Touch has been priced at $229 for an 8 gigabyte version. Well, now it's going to be $199, a key price point. For a 32 gigabyte version, it's $299. And for a 64 gigabyte version, $399. And this will be available when iOS 5 ships on October 12th. So going into the holiday season, this is the lineup. And look at it. It's a great lineup with perfect price points. The iPod Shuffle for just $49. The iPod Nano starting at $129. The iPod Touch at $199. Really, something great at every price point for anyone who loves music. So that's iPod 
and the iPod lineup. We love music. And we're going to continue making the world's best music players. <laughs> Next, iPhone. As you know, last year, we introduced iPhone 4. And it's a breakthrough phone. And despite competitors trying really hard to copy it, they really haven't come to close to anything nearly as good. It's got that beautiful retina display, glass front, all glass back, the revolutionary stainless steel bands that create the antenna system and make it the thinnest smartphone. And as you've heard, it's the number one smartphone in the world and number one in customer satisfaction. So people have been wondering, how do you follow up a hit product like the iPhone 4? Well, I'm really pleased to tell you today all about the brand new iPhone 4S. <laughs> of course, it starts with the retina display. Of course, it's glass in the front and back and has that incredible stainless steel band around it, making it the thinnest smartphone. But don't be deceived, because inside, it is all new. So how is it different? First, it has a new chip inside. The A5 chip that we've launched just this year in the iPad 2 is now making its way into the iPhone. This is an Apple-designed chip that's remarkable. It's a dual-core processor. It delivers performance that's up to twice as fast at CPU tasks. It's also dual-core graphics, which means the graphics can be up to seven times faster than they were in the previous iPhone. This is going to help across all the kinds of applications you might use. But one area that we really see it scream is on games. What developers can do with gameplay on a phone will be remarkable. To show you just what that can be like, I'm really proud to invite up the president of Epic Games, Mike Cap, to show you something unbelievable. Mike? Thanks, Tom. Hi, folks. So a year ago, we showed our Unreal Engine 3 game technology running for the very first time on iOS. With groundbreaking visuals and unique gameplay, Infinity Blade was a, a really huge success for Epic Games. We delighted millions of players, and we booked almost $20 million in revenue, which is a pretty good share of that $3 billion number we saw. <laughs> so that's why I'm so excited today to show you for the very first time our next iOS exclusive that leverages that A5 chip, Infinity Blade 2. Donald? Today we're going to show you visuals like you've never seen before on a handheld device. In fact, we're going to show you some graphics techniques that aren't even seen on high-end gaming consoles. So this may all look pre-rendered, but I swear this is all running in real time on that A5. We join our hero Cyrus as he embarks on his journey to find the Worker of Secrets, the legendary creator of the Infinity Blade. His goal is to get him to join him in his quest to track down and destroy the Deathless. So these uh, light shafts coming through the door are called dynamic light rays, or god rays. This is tech we only recently added to our engine and showed for the first time in our other hit game, Gears of War 3, and it's already running on this amazing device. Infinity Blade 1 concentrated on incredibly detailed and lifelike character animation, but now with the power of the A5, we can bring that detail to the rest of the environment with fireflies dancing in the air, and leaves blowing in the wind, the reflections in the water, we even have koi swimming in the pond. I mean, look at that beautiful. Right? And so all this adds up to a realistic and immersive world that feels like you're in the middle of a movie.